Hello, I'm John Deller and I work for Hawkeye Industries. Hawkeye sells the Duratec line of air cure products used in the composites industry. Our products are used to put the surface on composite patterns. We believe to make a great composite part, a part with a great surface. You need to make a great mold, and a great mold is made from a great pattern. The purpose of the video is to provide some information about choice of product, the value the products provide, and how they're best used. Our demonstration will start with a pattern that was provided to us by our customer Marine Concepts. This pattern is made from cut expanded polystyrene foam, coated with Duratec Styroshield Primer. The value of the Styroshield Primer is that it allows a substitution of low-cost EPS foam for much more expensive urethane tooling board. Once the Styroshield Primer was applied to the EPS, a laminate was built up and then polyester tooling putty was applied. The tooling putty was remilled and that's the surface we'll start with today. We believe that creating a flawless pattern surface minimizes the prep work that has to be done on the mold after it's pulled off the pattern. Now in some cases a mold doesn't require a flawless surface. Some kinds of parts, like race car parts, are designed to be painted after they're taken out of the mold. In that case it doesn't make a lot of sense to put a flawless surface on the part or the mold or the pattern. In other cases, things like boats, you do want a smooth shiny gel coat surface on the boat right when it's taken out of the mold. In that case, the mold needs to be smooth and shiny, and we believe the best way to achieve that is to make a smooth, shiny, and glossy pattern. By doing this, you minimize the prep work that has to be done on the tooling gel coat after the mold is taken off of the pattern. Some products, particularly older generation products, lose their gloss while the mold is being made. The combination of heat and chemical attack causes the surface to lose its gloss, and that dull surface is what's transferred to the tooling gel coat. The choices for this demonstration are to make a Class A finish on the pattern, smooth, shiny, and glossy. EPS foam is good to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So the choices we make today are for mold making below 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The Duratec products that we're going to use on this project will be the Styroshield primer that's already been applied to the EPS foam. Now to the tooling putty service, we'll use Duratec 823A polyester sealer. Purpose of the sealer is to give us a good strong bond with the primer. We'll use Duratec 707-082 light gray surface primer. This product has a combination of properties that make it good for this type of project. It sprays well, it lays down smoothly without orange peel, it's easy to sand, it provides a strong surface resistant to cracking, and finally it's a good anchor for the Duratec top coat. Once that's sanded and prepared, we'll top coat it with the Duratec vinyl ester top coat. In this case, we'll use 1910-045, which is Duratec red vinyl ester top coat. So we're going to spray on the 823A. It's a fine spray. You just want to put on enough to get the surface wet. Before you spray it on, it's important to catalyze. We recommend that you use about 2% of a MEKP catalyst. And we do our work with the Sergius 925 product and find that's the best for the Duratec products. Immediately after applying the Duratec 823A polyester sealer, move on to the surface primer. It's best to begin applying the primer while the surface is still tacky. Add the catalyst and mix well. The first coat that we spray should be a light coat, a mist coat. Spray a light coat and then allow at least two minutes. Make further build coats, adding four to five thousandths of an inch, four to five mils per build coat, and wait at least two minutes and generally not more than 20 minutes between coats. It's necessary to allow a couple minutes between passes for solvents to escape. Build up about 20 thousandths of an inch, 20 mils of coating, and then allow the Duratec to cure. Right away you can see how flat and smooth the surface is. Usually if there's a leading profile that occurs immediately after spraying, it relaxes and smooths out while the Duratec dries. After a few hours, the Duratec surface primer is cured hard and smooth. It's necessary to sand the primer to allow any trapped solvent to escape and allow the primer to cure fully. For this pattern, we've chosen to apply a top coat to the primer, so we're going to create a bright, shiny, Class A finish. We're going to use the Duratec 1910-045 red vinyl ester top coat. There's a lot of similarities to spraying the Duratec vinyl ester top coat and the Duratec primer. Some of the differences, though, are we recommend using a low hydrogen peroxide catalyst like Sergius 925H instead of something like Sergius 925. The low hydrogen peroxide catalyst will minimize foaming and entrained air in the vinyl ester top coat. You can apply the top coat through the same gun that you use to spray the primer. 
However, use the lower pressure and set the fan for a finer spray. The first coat should be a fine coat, a dust coat. You should still be able to see the primer through the surface. After the dust coat is applied, wait at least two minutes and then begin the build coats with the Duratec top coat. Each build coat should be four to five mils and it's necessary to build at least 20 mils to get good cure. Wait at least two minutes between each wet pass for solvent to release from the top coat. It's good practice to do the first wet pass in one direction and then the next pass in a 90 degrees opposed direction. This makes sure the Duratec is evenly distributed and there's no thick spots and no thin spots. Here you can see that the Duratec is laid down smooth and is really free of orange peel and other surface defects. Even if you initially see some orange peel, this is usually going to flatten out while the solvent evaporates and the Duratec cures. Once the Duratec is cured enough that you can sand it, cut the surface and use as fine a grid of sandpaper as you can. The grid of sandpaper will be determined by how much profile needs to be removed. It's necessary to wait at least eight hours from when you begin sanding before you start compounding and polishing. Hello, I'm Harley Carlson with Hawkeye Industries. I'm sure that John Dollar has already explained to you where we are at. I'm just going to talk to you a minute about what choices I used for sandpaper and how I sprayed this. Initially, I sprayed the surface primer and it leveled out nicely to where I could become dry sanding with 220 grit paper. After I 220 sanded the primer, then I was able to apply the top coat. The vinyl ester top coat flows out very nicely and I was able to start sanding at 320 just to remove the orange peel. I will then go to wet sanding the product and all I'm now doing is removing the 320 scratches with the 400. I will wet sand from 400, 600, 800 and 1000 and then go to buffing. So we started two days ago with a pattern made of cut tooling putty. We sealed the pattern, primed it, and applied the Duratec top coat. We've sanded, compounded, and polished, and now we have a great surface, smooth, glossy, free of defects, and we're ready to make a mold. These are the composite industry's safest and fastest routes to a premium pattern finish. For information on a distributor to you, please go to our website at wwwduratech one D-U-R-A-T-E-C, and then the number one, dot com. Click on the tab for distributors, and you'll find one near you. Or call us at 909-546-1160.